This is Mario Andretti, and you are listening to Below the Yellow Line. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Below the Line. Corey Heim is your winner in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race at Kansas, the Heart of America 200. He leads 79 laps en route to his second win of the season. Two wins, eight top tens in the first eight races of the year. He had two wins all of last season, of course, came up short of the championship. Uh, if he's not your championship favorite in the Truck Series after tonight or, you know, before tonight, even after tonight, um, <laughs> you're blind, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, he, he's just the best guy out here. Like, it's it's raw speed, yes. It's consistency, yes. But there's something about Corey Heim to me that just screams, like, future cup star. And it's not just results. Like, the way he carries himself, the way he answers questions, he's 21 years old, but he seems like he's 40 in terms of experience, in terms of talent, skill, his ability to answer questions off the racetrack, his ability to tell his team what they need to do with the truck. Like, it's just incredible to me how well-rounded of a driver, how good he is at, like, everything. Not just driving, helping in the garage area, telling his crew exactly what he needs. He's just such a well-rounded young driver, a well-rounded young prospect. Obviously, he's got an end with Legacy Motor Club. He made his cup debut last week, finished a solid P25 at Dover, and then making his second cup start tomorrow at Kansas. Um, you know, the, there are no expectations for him. You know, it's his second cup start on still pretty short notice. Eric Jones will be back in the car next weekend at Darlington. But Corey High, man, is just he's just good. Like, he's just really, really good. Uh, 2022 ran a partial schedule, and I think won two races that year for KBM. Won, like, his second truck start in the 51 at Gateway. Wins only twice last year. He gets wiped out in the championship. I think wiped out host of our the championship. So, you know, I don't you can we can debate on if he deserved it. He had uh, 19 top 10s in 22 races last year. He still won the regular season championship despite missing Gateway. Like, that's how good he was. He missed a race and still won the regular season title this year. I think he's leading the points right now, leading the playoff standings now. He's tied with Ekis, um as far as series regulars with the most wins in the series. And this is a tough stretch for the Truck Series guys. This is their only time, so the longest streak of consecutive races they have, I, I think. Uh, five in a row. You got Kansas, Darlington, Wilkesboro, Charlotte, Gateway. Tough tracks, varying tracks, all different tracks. You know, Kansas and Charlotte, yeah, they're mile and a half, but they're still radically different. Wilkesboro, Darlington, they're beasts to their own. Gateway is a, is a you know, one and a quarter mile flat racetrack in, in, uh, there in St. Louis. So there's just a lot of varying tracks. I think you kind of are what you are now at this point in the year. But after this five race stretch, you'll be more than halfway done with the year. You'll have 12 of 23 races completed. You'll only have four races left in the regular season for the Trek Series. So uh, you kind of are what you are now, but at this five race stretch is really going to tell us who the best teams are, who the title contenders are. I think it's pretty obvious that Sanchez, Ekis, Heim, those are probably the three best guys. Uh, and then you look, you know, is it going to be Ankrum? Is it going to be Majeski? Um, is it going to be Carruth? Who's going to take that fourth final four spot? Obviously, none of those guys are locked in, even close locked in, even Corey Heim. You know, one bad race can derail your, your championship run with this playoff system. As much as I don't like the playoff system, you know, it, it creates drama. And uh, even with that playoff system, even though he's 0 for 1 in the championship, I'm just going to say it right now. He was my title pick coming into the year, and he's showing why. Like, Corey Heim is my championship pick right now. He's the guy you can most confidently say, I trust him. I trust the team. Sorry for this light. I know that light's kind of weird there. Um, he's just good. He's just dang good. I know I'm kind of repeating myself, you know, but he's just like, there's no faults with that team. He's run well everywhere. His worst finish of the year was 10th at Martinsville. Um, and he only has, I think, one other finish outside the top five, which was a sixth, I think, at Bristol, maybe. Um, you know, he's not qualifying all that great, but he doesn't need to because he's got the best race craft of any series regular out there. At least it, it appears that way to me. I mean, still led 79 laps. Um you know, so anyway, uh, going through uh, the results here, I'll put that banner on the screen. I meant to have that going from the start. Oh, well. Um, Heim wins it. Zane Smith in second. Not been a good year for him in Cup. He's last in points among full time guys, but maybe this will give him some confidence tonight. His teammate, Christian Eckes, in third. Again, Eckes, like, 
what is there to say? I, I think I ranked time on my as my number one in my article for field level media this weekend is my um you know, the, the guy that I see is the the best prospect in NASCAR. And again, he showed it. Actus was on that list too. I'll tell you one guy who wasn't on that list, Caden Honeycutt, P4. He impressed me tonight. Um I don't think he's running full time. Maybe no, he's not running full time in that forty-five. But he made the most of his opportunity tonight. Uh, speaking of making the most of an opportunity, how about uh, Brett Moffitt? His first start of the year. I think he made like two starts last year. He won at Talladega. He's a champion. I think the twenty eighteen Truck Series champion he has Cup Series experience, Xfinity experience. Maybe he doesn't bring any sponsors, but why is nobody giving this man a shot? He's a champion. He has cup experience. He has plenty of Xfinity Series experience. He came in in a one-off tonight, or I know he's going to run like four or five races for Tricon this year, but comes in first race of the year, finishes P5. Give the man a chance. A <laughs> full-time ride. He will be a title threat. Uh, Nick Sanchez in sixth. Tanner Gray in seventh. Dean Thompson, good run for him in eighth. Daniel Dye finally starting to get the ball rolling. P9. Matt Crafton in tenth. Uh, Crafton now is going on almost four years of, of a winless streak. Um, hasn't won since Kansas in July of 2020. It's a long streak. Uh, Bailey Curry, 11th, Grant Enfinger in 12th, Raja Karuth in 13th, Brett Holmes, solid run in 14th, Ty Dillon, 15th, Ben Rhodes continues to struggle in 16th. No, by the way, Ford is now 0 for 32 in NASCAR races this year, all 29 points races for the top three series and the clash and the duels. Jake Garcia in 17th, Lane Riggs 18th, Cam Waters 19th. So he finished this race. Better start for him. Not quite SBG levels of good, you know, coming in and winning his first NASCAR start. And there's also another supercar driver. I forget their name, but uh, that'll be making uh, their first cup start with RCR. Uh, I want to say at Sonoma in the 33 car. Uh, Tyler Ankerman, 20th, Mason Massey, 21st, Timmy Hill, 22nd, Matt Mills, 23rd, Thad Moffat in 24th, Stuart Friesen, bad day, 25th, Lawless Allen, 26th, Taylor Gray was running 13th until he cut a tire late in this race and ended up 27th, pole sitter Chase Purdy relegated to 28th. They really needed a good run. They just needed points, man. They're back in a deep hole points-wise for the playoffs. That situation didn't get any better tonight. Mason Maggio, 29th. Connor Mosack won the ARCA race earlier today, but finishes 30th. Spencer Boyd, 31st. Jennifer Joe Cobb, her return does not go well. She ends 32nd. And my win pick, I know we didn't get to do a pre-race show, and I apologize for that, but my win pick for this race was Ty Majeski. And I think lap one or two, he gets into the wall, has a flat tire, and ends up dead last in 32nd. So... You know, even worse for Thor Sport, they did not have a good night. Uh, Crafton was their best finishing truck in 10th. Uh, and when 48-year-old Matt Crafton is your best, that's, that's not good, no matter what kind of night it is. So Majeski uh, brings up the rear for the field, for Thor Sport, and for Ford. Uh, I don't believe we had the playoff standings updated. Let me check ESPN one more time, see if they're updated. They are still not. So we will have those on this week's pre-race show, which I promise will happen for Darlington. So I believe that's all I have, ladies and gentlemen. Good Saturday night at Truck Series Racing. Emily and I will have you covered from Kansas tomorrow with the post-race show for the Advent Health 400. Her driver, Denny Hamlin, Emily's driver, Denny Hamlin, looking to go back-to-back -back in that one. So like, subscribe, comment, and share. Support us on Patreon, patreon.com backslash Below the Align Podcast. You can find us on YouTube at Below the Align, at, sorry, at Below the Align, and at Below the Align on all major podcast platforms. My name is Samuel Stubbs. I'll See you tomorrow to recap the cup race from Kansas. Have a great evening, everybody. Goodbye.